In this presentation at ASH uh, 2020, focusing on patients who have been treated uh, with lenalidomide maintenance after completion of combination therapy with or without uh, transplant, patients were uh, uh, eligible to enroll if they were in the standard setting in terms of ECOG status, lab results, and if they're looking to go on maintenance. So it's basically a cohort to patients that have completed their planned uh, initial therapy with or without transplant. We have followed patients for many years on the trial, uh, and we show that many of these patients, almost 40% of the patients have a very long uh, follow-up, uh, including MRD negativity. Uh, there are some patients that have above 10 years of follow-up. When we look at MOD negativity, uh, we see that patients that have MOD negativity at two years, they have been at uh, baseline at one year and two years. That's around 40% of the patients. When you continue to monitoring these patients, they are very likely to sustain their MOD negativity. So I think what this study informs us is that MOD negativity at one time point is good, but if you have it at multiple time points, and as I outlined in this particular study, if you do it at two years of follow-up, so that would imply three MOD tests, that's a very strong predictor of very long sustained MOD negativity. Also, this study shows that there are some patients who uh, unfortunately don't make it to MOD negativity, but even if they are MOD positive at the low level, they may stay MOD positive for very many years. So the real troublemakers seem to be patients who don't have a good response at all, as expected, but also there are some patients who go fast down to MOD negativity, and then they unfortunately bounce up back and become MOD positive and have a clinical progression. So those are the bad outcome groups, while sustained MOD negativity or even sustained MOD positivity seems to have a good clinical outcome.